I'm here talking with Simon Townsley, a photographer who's just come back from a month in Ukraine, uh, covering what's going on uh, down there. One of the visits you had was to the uh, Black Sea town of Odessa, yeah. which is not far away from the infamous, now, now infamous, uh, Snake Island. Uh, it's right. not too far, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's on that coast. Snake Island's along that coast. And uh, so the, the story goes, Snake Island's occup uh, occupied, protected, I should say, by Ukrainian uh, troops. Russian uh, ships uh, approach it, ask them to surrender, and they say, they say, Russians, go fuck yourselves. Go fuck yourselves. Which is, yeah. And, catchy. Uh, uh, ca catchy indeed. And, and now you see it on posters and billboards all over the country. Yeah. All, all over the country. They've put up yeah. these um, yeah, signs. So you were there. Sure, yeah. Well, well not on Snake Island. Island but not not on Snake Island, thank yeah. goodness. But yeah. you, you spoke to people who were involved. Tell, tell, tell me what... What well, they told you? It was such an important and it's such a massively kind of um, important moment for, you know, um, Ukrainian kind of solidarity where they saw that people were standing up for the Russians. So that was a really big deal. And the story went that, you know, they were then obliterated by, you know, the sort of barrages of um, um, R Russian naval kind of um, shelling, you know. But it actually... Um, they weren't. Um, I don't know if anybody died, but we do know that most of them were taken prisoner and um, and still are, and I think some have been exchanged. Um, but we, we thought enough of it to find the wife of one of the guys who was on Snake Island, and we went for a, a day trip to find her, a three-hour drive each way, um, to find her with her kids, who she hadn't told. Um, she hadn't told them what had happened to their dad. Um, and we went and found an interview her to find out what she knew of. And she'd been texting with them when it had happened. So we got uh, we got quite a lot of information from, from her and about you know what, what her feelings were about it all. So what did she mm -hmm. say? Well, she said that they'd been um, in communication up until the point where, you know, the Russians kind of stormed in and then um, she'd kept texting him. I said, well, what does he say? Is he seeing the text? She said, no. He'll see the text when he comes back. So she's she'd been texting him regularly, as a, in a in a kind of diary like way, telling him how much she cared about him and what the kids were doing and what they'd do when he came back. It was very moving because clearly he hasn't got his phone anymore. Um, but she's pretty proud of him. Yeah, but it was tragic to think that you know the kids didn't know, and when they're going to see their dad again. Oh, and, yeah, and and best. Uh... Best we know, they are they're prisoners somewhere in yeah Ukraine. in Russia probably or, Russia. or in Crum probably in Crimea actually I can imagine yeah, yeah. would be probably be taken there but I did read something today and not in enough detail to know that um, I think some of them have been released if not all right so maybe they've been reunited already perhaps somewhat of a, a turning point certainly in terms of how the nation um, unified mm -hmm. in its uh, in its resilience absolutely yep. fascinating story and we'll continue uh, talking about topics like this for Simon in the series to come